This is Tech Beyond the Hype, the podcast where we talk to experts and leaders about the latest tech and business trends to figure out what's shaping the future of work. Welcome back to the show. I'm Anna, and today we're tackling one of the biggest challenges facing businesses in 2024, how to build the right foundation for artificial intelligence. Our guest, Scott Sinclair, is Practice Director at Enterprise Strategy Group. And in the interview, he shares eye-opening research on how companies are navigating the complex decisions between cloud and on-premises AI deployment. Whether you're just starting your AI journey or scaling existing solutions, this episode is packed with practical insights that you do not want to miss. I hope you find it helpful and that you enjoy the interview as much as I enjoyed making it. Now, on with the show. Scott, thank you so much for joining me. It is an absolute pleasure to have you all today. I'm really excited to talk to you about AI infrastructure and the way that it's shaping business decisions and how AI is changing the way that businesses look at their data infrastructure. But before we dive into that, could you just introduce yourself a little bit and tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to be here. So as you mentioned, uh, my name is Scott Sinclair. I'm a practice director with the Enterprise Strategy Group. And for those who are listening, who may not be familiar with the Enterprise Strategy Group, we're an IT analyst firm. We do a tremendous amount of research as well as strategy work on all facets of technology, everything from infrastructure to application modernization, to cloud, to security, to artificial intelligence, which we're going to talk about today. And I'm excited to have this conversation. I'm going to throw out some of our research, but uh, I'm excited to be here and chat with you. Excellent. So before the podcast, I had a look through sort of your research that you just mentioned. And part of it mentions the evolution of IT infrastructure. How would you say that AI is shaping the way that businesses think about their infrastructure? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, AI on one hand, it's easy to think about it as, oh, it's just the next big thing. There's always been these big things that, you know, it was cloud. And then remember when we were all excited about Bitcoin and, you know, everything else. And then cybersecurity continues to be a focus. That being said, it is fascinating, whether we're talking about machine learning or now this new advent of generative AI, how quickly nearly every size organization across nearly every industry is just not enamored with the potential is probably a great way to say that. And that's just not the, you know, the, the CIOs or the CTOs, the CEOs all understand this. And I think A lot of it was spurred by ChatGPT coming out and being really just the best demonstration of what the potential of generative AI could be. And my my personal belief is every CEO saw that and said, oh, I want that. Uh, I want one of those for us. So what does that mean? Well, like I mentioned, machine learning has been around for several years. Our research into that has shown tremendous benefits, tremendous return on investment for those type of initiatives. Looking at generative AI in particular, in a recent study, by the end of the year, about 30% of organizations in the study expect to have some form of generative AI project in production, and an additional 33% expect to be in pilot or POC. So organizations are moving very, very quickly on this. Now, you, you ask, how is this impacting IT strategy? How does it impact how we think about data? Well, the bottom line is, I mean, it's is fueling a number of aspects because if you think about it, it truly is, you know, we talk about data, you know, data being the, the fuel for modern business or data being the new oil. I think that came out 15, 20 years ago, but now it truly is the way in which we use data can actually unlock tremendous new revenue opportunities and new competitive differentiation. And as a result, another research staff for you. of organizations agreed that the growth of AI has us, and including generative AI, has us reevaluating our application deployment strategy. So essentially, almost every organization is saying, we are rethinking the way we do everything because of AI. Now, part of that is because at the end of the day, as cloud adoption rose and as organizations started to go from hybrid cloud to multi-cloud to now we have lots of data centers, we have lots of clouds, we got edge environments, it, essentially data is everywhere. And placement was often driven by what makes sense for the app. Sometimes it was just driven by what's available, what makes sense from a cost standpoint. 
Now, if we think about AI and how we're actually able to train models on our own data, it gets organizations thinking about, well, which data do we need to train? Where is it? Where does it make sense to have the AI live? Does it make sense to have it in multiple places? How do we manage this data? And I think that's a lot of what we're seeing is organizations coming to grips with the data aspect of it. But in addition to it, it's other things like access to accelerator technology, like things from NVIDIA. It's access to which environments have the best tools. What expertise do I have in-house? And in addition, the thing that I've kind of been avoiding, but saving for last is cost. We see dramatic differences in the cost of solutions based on the location, based on the capabilities, based on the performance. And this variety on one hand is wonderful for buyers because I have a lot of choices, but on the other hand, it's horrible when you're trying to make a decision because it, I, I want to say nearly, if not every single IT vendor out there, if you come and ask, do you have a solution for AI? Their answer will be yes. Now, all those answers vary dramatically. But just the fact that there's so much noise in the marketplace, it is getting very difficult. Yeah, I can only imagine to summarize what you said, you've got all this data sitting across multiple different locations. You know that you have the potential to use that data to unlock revenue streams or make better business decisions. But having a bunch of different products on the market available as the buyer in that situation, it's kind of like decision paralysis. How do you know what works based on what you've got and how do you change what you've got so that it's ready for the product that you're hoping to implement? And I guess to that point, is there an ideal infrastructure for AI in 2024? Is there a data management strategy that's ideal for integrating AI? And if so, are there any elements to it which are surprising or different to what you might have seen previously? Oh, yeah. First off, I, I want to acknowledge, I, I love the analysis paralysis common because that's literally what's happening among a tremendous a number of organizations. So actually we see both sides. So on one hand, we see people with the analysis paralysis. The other thing we have the, I don't care how much it costs, just make it happen. And those people, as you might expect, whenever we start, when regardless of what part of our lives we say, I don't care how much it costs, just make it happen. Eventually we say, wait, why does this cost so much? And it's like, well, you wanted to move quickly and we just use the most expensive thing. And now you're questioning us on return. The few organizations that are pushing back on AI after early adoption, it's a return standpoint. It's like, well, what are the returns been on our investment? And some of those environments did the, we don't care how much it costs, just get started now. And so there is a balance we have to find. Now, as it relates to which environment makes the most sense? The right answer is unfortunately the answer no one wants to hear is it depends. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. Now, the big challenge, you know, I mentioned about data, right? Because data is everywhere. You know, just some stats because, you know, I'm a stats guy, so I'll throw them out. 80% of organizations leverage more than one public cloud provider. That's in addition to whatever they have on premises. 82% of organizations agree that leveraging multiple public cloud providers delivers strategic benefits. So we're not in a world where anyone's ever looking to consolidate environments anytime soon. Application data, it's disparate, it's spread across different environments. It's going to stay that way. Now, the challenge, of course, is it's not just the physical distance between these environments and, and data being spread everywhere. It's each environment has its own disparate experience, its own different tools, requirements, capabilities, everything else. And often within a company, those are different teams. You know, we have an AWS team, we have an Azure team, we have a JCP team, we have our own internal team. Now, sometimes there's overlap, but often the different experiences make that even more challenging as you're trying to develop a solution that leverages data everywhere. Something I didn't mention out of all of this, and I probably should have, is I'm talking a lot about data. But when we think about AI, organizations that are very early into it may focus primarily on Let's think about training, let's think about inference, let's build our own AI environment, which all very true, you have to do those things. And those can reside on premises, they can be in the cloud, they can be at the edge, they can be at a variety of locations. The key part though, to building a successful, repeatable, continuous environment is thinking about the data pipeline that serves that training and inferencing environment. And that's why I'm talking a lot about multiple clouds and, and data being spread everywhere, because it's about the importance of building that data pipeline so that you can continuously feed 
those investments you've made in accelerator technology, things like NVIDIA to make sure you're doing the training and, and tuning of the individual models. Now, the other thing that we've seen is, so this is what makes it really difficult is much of the data that we want to use in AI has sensitivity or locality requirements. Uh, things like, Hey, we want to look at customer data and see what we can get here. Maybe we make some sort of customizable response as part of a generative AI based chatbot that can know essentially who I am and what my needs are. So I can respond more directly to my particular issues to do that. It, it has to access information about me. Well, there might be locality requirements where organizations want to keep those on premises. Now challenge with that is some of the best tools to get started with AI and do that are located on the public cloud providers. And in fact, when we looked at why organizations, how they think about public cloud providers, artificial intelligence was the most commonly identified workload that drives someone to use a different cloud provider than their primary cloud provider. That's not to say, for example, the dominant cloud providers are as good as the secondary cloud providers. AI is just so important that people will add extra analysis to where they put that or extra scrutiny. And it's also one of the top reasons why people switch from one cloud provider to another is because AI and the various support for AI is so important. When it comes to actually deploying AI and where they do it right now, organizations are deploying artificial intelligence based workloads everywhere, whether it's edge, public cloud, co-location on premises. Now, overall, on average, organizations are more likely to deploy AI workloads on public cloud searches than they are on premises. And that's by a ratio of about two to one. That being said, when we ask people and the majority of organizations, we said, look, if you could put your AI environment anywhere, where would you be? The preference for many organizations is to keep that on premises. And so this is, a, this is where we have a difference between what people do versus what they would prefer. And I think that preference is based off of, we know AI is important. We know it requires sensitive, important data. And we like the idea of having better control of that also from a cost standpoint. That being said, there's just a recognition that public cloud tools are more mature in many cases and can help people get started faster. And that time to value is very important. So as it relates back to anyone listening, that's getting started in this, there's multiple factors to consider. It's thinking about which data sets are you planning? What's the data locality requirements for those? And then which tools and experience do you have in house to go build? You know, are you essentially an AWS only shop? What tools do they have? Do you have that expertise in house? Because that's going to play a, a huge role here as well. So at the end of the day, it depends, but often it depends off of where your data is, which your own internal investments have been in the expertise of your own internal personnel. Right. That's really interesting. So what I'm hearing is you've got this tension between organizations wanting to bring their data on-prem because of the control element, but then at the same time, having a lot more services, a lot more advanced applications available on the public cloud. So then there's this kind of toss up between the two of trying to balance both. And you've mentioned a couple of times cost. Is it more cost effective to do all these things on-prem or in the public cloud? So the, the fun part is obviously it depends. That being said, and, and there, I'm making some assumptions, right? We, we have seen that it can be more cost effective to do it on-premises. Now, part of that assumption is you have a data center and data center personnel already. If you don't, then it's, it's going to be cheaper in the cloud because you don't have those existing fixed investments. The other thing too, that we've seen, and this goes back into how organizations think about some of the challenges. So we, we talked about data locality and, and security and concerns there and compliance. All those things lead to certain data sets, people wanting those to stay in house. So the movement of data has a cost to it. Now, whether that's a phys like a dollar's cost or whether that's a cost in risk or whether it's a cost in time, there's a, there's a cost to moving data. So ideally you don't want to do that. The other thing that on premises provides a couple of things that organizations that are exploring AI have started to figure out is it provides you a little more control over your cost scalability. You can make an investment, for example, within AI and keep those costs controlled 
rather than basically opening up the cloud to some of your data science teams. And all of a sudden you find out that on the one hand, you're getting that increased ag agility scalability, which is great from the public cloud. But on the other hand, you can get those surprise bills come in. Those people are experimenting with different things. So what organizations have found out is, hey, look, as we get started with AI, sometimes we may want to prototype in the cloud, which can get us to move pretty fast. But if we do that, we need to keep a tight rein on our cloud costs and keep that under control. An alternative to that is if we have data on premises, we can do a smaller deployment on premises. Maybe even sometimes it can be a workstation with an NVIDIA GPU, just even to get started on some prototyping, do something on premises. That way we know our investment is fixed and we can get better control on it, see what the outcome is, and then scale under a more controlled environment. The other thing that we've seen just in general when it comes to, and I'm not going to do any sort of vendor comparison in this. So mileage may vary. If you're listening to this, always evaluate your own costs of, of individual uh, solutions. That's kind of the fine print in, in what I'm going to say here. That being said, when we ask organizations that have done the analysis of costs between on-premises and public cloud, and for example, when we ask organizations that are looking to migrate a bunch of workloads to the cloud, and we ask them, why don't you which types of workloads do you not migrate to the cloud? Sometimes the rationale is that data locality, the compliance reasons I have, that's one of the top ones. One of the other top ones that we consistently see is it is more cost effective to get low latency performance to large amounts of data on premises. So we see that often show up in our research and that makes sense. And if you think about it, what is AI? It is a workload that requires a high performance to a lot of data. So there are options to deploy this overall from a lower cost standpoint on premises. That being said, everything I said before about public cloud, having better tools, better access, better scalability, better time to value, all that stuff is still true. So this is part of the balance that organizations have to figure out and manage as they evaluate what they use. And what that's led to is sometimes increased data movement. 75% of organizations in our research agree, hey, look, we've regularly moved apps or data from one cloud provider to another. And that's in addition to all the movement we see on from on-premises to the public cloud. And in addition to that, about three quarters of organizations also say we face challenges with application and data portability. Moving data is difficult. And so to put it in a nutshell, what organizations have found out that on-premises delivers is better control over costs. And as you scale, what we see in our research, there's a suggestion that on-premises can provide the ability to be more efficient in their use of cost to deliver performance for AI workloads. That being said, there's always a trade-off because of the tools and capabilities and the, and the speed at which you can um, get projects off the ground in AI. So again, it's a challenge, but I, I think the key takeaway is if we would have looked at this two years ago and you said, where should AI be done? Nearly everyone would say, well, obviously the cloud. I think now the reaction is, well, actually it depends. And on-premises environments actually have several benefits that should be considered. Right. Yeah. I was going to say that actually, because I was thinking as you were talking about <laughs> In the pre-AI world, the idea of data coming back on prem was next to unthinkable. We were all talking cloud, non-stop, everything was cloud, and it almost seemed as though on-premises data storage was kind of going out of fashion in a sense. So it's interesting to see how AI is shifting the way that we think about infrastructure and where things are kept. Moving forward a little bit, and I know that you're a stats guy, so I might be putting you outside of your comfort zone with this question, but if you had to bet on one emerging technology that's going to revolutionize AI infrastructure within the next kind of three to five years, what would you say that is? Oh, wow. Okay. So to me, this is the big challenge. And I didn't provide my background during the opening, but I spent a lot of my time on the infrastructure side, data storage, which kind of why we're talking about this. 
And as much as I'd love to say there's going to be some new accelerator technology that's going to completely change the world, and there might be. When I look at the big challenges of AI, and I keep coming back to data, right now, where we see some of the early use cases, the early investments, is in areas where organizations have a good sense on what internal data they want to use to go train these models. I should have said this earlier, but there, there's a number of different ways that you can build models. There are many open source off the shelf models that you can get. I think when AI first showed up, the thought was, well, everyone's obviously going to train your own models on your own data. No, nobody wants to do that. That's too expensive. So what we found is where organizations tend to be leaning towards is you take an off the shelf model and you tune it with your own data, whether it's through a retrieval augmented generation or RAG or, or some of these other tools to help tune the model. So basically you can augment it with your own data. So it knows the answers to the questions you want it to have, but you're not building a model from scratch. Now, the reason why I bring that up is in a world in which every organization is investing in AI. How do you create differentiation? Well, how you create differentiation is in your ability to use your data to augment those off the shelf models. And to me, the big challenge that we have as not just people in IT, but also just as a society, we are not good at keeping track of data. We just aren't. What's funny is, and this is more anecdotal. But some of the more highly regulated industries tend to be able to actually make headway into AI faster than some of the less regulated industries because they've had to put all the scrutiny into data governance ahead of time. But if you think about it, for many companies, we've been treating data as this giant junk drawer. The concept of a data lake that people still talk about and was big about five, seven years ago was the idea of, we'll just throw all your data in one place and then you can get it later. Well, the point is, if you can't, understand what data you want to train your model with. And then as that data changes, understand, okay, this is the new thing that we need to make sure the model gets trained on. And you don't have the right guardrails in place to do AI. And this gets us more into the concept of responsible AI, the ability to accurately train models. If a model has a hallucination or does something that you don't expect, the ability to quickly diagnose why is that and remediate it quickly and update it properly. But it's not just getting that first model done. It's about how do you continuously improve this thing over time to continue to deliver value and the ability to do that effectively and successfully is really what's going to separate the successful use of AI or, or the leaders from just everybody else. And this is my long way of coming all the way back to your question of, well, what's going to be the technology that helps that? Well, we need better ways to manage and think about data and data management tools and data management platforms in order to better prep for this world where new data from the business is going to come in and we're going to need to augment it and update our AI models in order to keep pace. Infrastructure technology will continue to evolve and adapt and give us more horsepower and, and more performance and more capacity, all that stuff's going to happen and it will all be important. But what I think is really necessary here is something that helps an enterprise more effectively manage data in these environments to get better at that. Because at the end of the day, I, I think that's going to be the big challenge that organizations face in terms of taking AI from a project and a prototype to something that is in production that the business can rely on, you know, three, four, five, six years down the road. Right, so some sort of tool that helps with getting all of the data management side of things on track so that it's clear what data is where, what data is being used for where and how. That's correct. And, you know, I'm talking like these tools don't exist. There are tools out there that do some of these things. I think we're still very early in what these tools can be and the power and capability that they have as they translate out of the data science world to something that's more accessible. And I think this is something we're going to continue to see more and more innovation on moving forward. The way I, I approach the question is I looked at all the things that we need to do 
to make AI or AI enabled workloads or AI initiatives part of a production level, enterprise level business that continues to function. And the part that spooks me is all the data management stuff. To me, that's the complex element. And like I said, there are definitely tools out there that help address it, but it's an area where when I talk to companies or when I talk to organizations, this is the hard part to figure out. That makes a lot of sense and resonates a lot on a personal level. I've worked in a number of companies in the past kind of 10 years and data is always something that is messy. So it makes a lot of sense that this is something that businesses just generally up until now, there hasn't really been a reason unless you're, like you said, those sectors where data really is heavily regulated and there's a lot of rules around how and what you store and where. If you're not in that kind of sector, it makes a lot of sense that this is the big issue. How do we get our data ready so that we can use these tools and make sure that they're not hallucinating and coming up with things that make no sense? Because if you're working with a data lake, like you said, how do you check that the data, that the AI model that you've implemented is actually correct or the answer isn't just rubbish? It's impossible. It, exactly. And it's funny, I was having a conversation about this where, uh, you know, I had differing opinions and someone in the AI space disagreed and said, you know, we have lots of tools that today people use and there are processes to go manage this. One of the things, the example was, you know, you look at CRM tools or things like, like Salesforce, for example, where you're able to input a whole bunch of data. We have processes where, you know, within databases and where we can get this analysis out. And my response was, so even the stuff that you're doing right now in Salesforce, you can trust that all the time. Oh, no, no. Sometimes people put in the wrong things and then we get into oh, no, we're not tracking meetings properly. And sometimes there's a deal in there that doesn't really make sense. And I'm like, look, all of that stuff that we just kind of wave our hands with and kind of figure out as humans that we see in the tools we use today, that we sit down, ah, that one I don't really trust. Let me go in and figure it out. Oh, someone didn't enter it correctly. All that stuff is, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm kind of mixing, you know, apples and oranges here, but it's those types of things that, create the risk for an AI project to go, oh no, I'm, I'm being trained on that because I'm treating them all equally, right? So even though as an organization, many companies may be, oh, we've solved that. I would argue, well, maybe you've solved it 80% of the way, or maybe you solved it 90% of the way, but it's that extra little bit that's going to actually uh, go a long way to determining the actual experience that the AI solution provides. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. And thinking about these masses of data, and we're talking about data mobility, we touched on it earlier. How are the cutting end organizations looking at data mobility? What are they doing to solve the challenge of moving massive amounts of data in a way that's AI efficient? Yeah. So there's a couple of things on that. I would say a lot has been messaged around the idea of don't move the data, put the AI with the data. And that's what's led to a lot of this desire or, or resurgence of on-premises data center type things. Okay. Let's say instead of moving all of our data to the public cloud, for example, let's put it where the data is. That being said, if you have data in the cloud, let's put the AI there. That is very nice in theory. And I think it's a good practice to get started. But one of the things that has continued to show up over and over again in all the research we do, whether it's on AI or anything else, is just how spread out data environments are. So what I recommend is in addition to, yes, try not to move data because every time you move data, there's cost, risk, time, all sorts of things associated with that. Also, it's important to invest in whether data management tools as well as data storage tools that can span locations and provide consistency of experience across location and consistency of functionality across location. What we need to get out of is this world of where if data lives on AWS, I have to deal with a different team than if it lives on Microsoft Azure, because that's going to kill us over time. You can't scale that way. You can't hire that way. It's very, very difficult to actually deal with that. You need tools that are consistent enough and easy enough and automated enough to where you can have one team get a more holistic view over not just your data, but also the storage in how you're securing and protecting that data across these environments. And I think that's going to be a big thing. I talked a lot about data management and how important that is. I think something else that is going to be key is tools that are able to help facilitate the movement of data. 
There's some storage tools out there, for example, that can auto migrate data or provide, for example, a, you know, for thinking about unstructured data or files, a global namespace so that if I'm running an AI project in the cloud, I can actually see data that lit resides in multiple locations and manage that effectively from that standpoint. At the end of the day, I, I think so much of it is going to come from just thinking about the data pipeline from a multi-location standpoint and simplifying that. That being said, all this stuff I talked about is about getting your data environment to where you're in a strong place for long-term AI success. I think as it comes to organizations that are getting started, I think what really matters there, and this is going to sound like I'm contradicting myself, is start very small. Start very small with a data set that you understand and pick a use case that is very much internal. So you can get it, you know, in business, we call these quick wins, right? You want a quick win. You want something where you deliver value quickly to your executive team, where you can measure it and you have a cost under control. And that's what led to, you know, I mentioned before, we do see organizations that are doing some prototyping on premises. And that's what's leading to that, you know, let's get a workstation, let's get a, you know, a video GPU, let's get some data out here and, and let's see if we can get something prototyped and up and running quickly. And I think that's essential because all this other stuff I talked about, which is about getting your data stayed in, in into where you're doing proper hygiene and it's secure and you're able to move data back and forth. That's hard. It is very difficult to do. And there's tools out there to help you, but to you know, use an analogy here, it's kind of like boiling the ocean. What you want to do is uh, don't start with that. Start with getting a small project up and running and then think through, okay, the data for that, how do we manage that data environment? And then slowly, gradually expand that to encompass the other data environments as your AI initiative scale. And I think that's something else that I wanted to make sure I brought up because I don't want people leaving here saying, oh, before we start AI, I got to get my entire data state in uh, under control, which honestly it, you do, but that's going to take a long time. Start small and grow. It's almost like all of the stuff that we've been talking about when it comes to data management and data governance. If you're someone who's out there starting off from day one, that's kind of running before you can walk as you're thinking about those things. You need to start off with the basics, get to know, understand how the how to integrate AI in a small data set so that you're then able to progress into more complex challenges as you're learning and developing. That, that's a great way to put it. Uh, and I, actually, I think you brought up a really interesting point, which is something that I think we all naturally assume, but is so important we need to state it, is as you are learning with AI and you start those initial projects, make sure that you capture what those best practices are for managing data so that you can carry it on to the next project and continue to expand that. Because it's not just, hey, these are the right tools, this is how you do it, but these are the best practices to create that good hygiene, so to speak, whether it comes into how you manage your data as you scale. Awesome. That's all the questions I had to ask you today. So thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I had a really great time. Thank you. Speak to you soon. So that was Scott Sinclair sharing invaluable insights on the future of AI infrastructure. One thing is clear. As more businesses look to implement AI into their workloads, the way we think about data and data management is changing faster than ever. And staying ahead of these changes is going to be critical in the future for businesses to succeed. To keep up with the latest business and technology trends, make sure to like, rate and subscribe to Tech Beyond the Hype wherever you listen to podcasts. Tech Beyond the Hype is a Tech Target original production.